Although this story of sickness is not a miracle in the biblical sense, any time someone can be cured by just talking to the principal is pretty noteworthy. Heal by just talking to the principal. <laughs> you can't make this stuff up. Students have been dodging school by being, um, sick forever. Every person alive has told a parent they shouldn't go to school that day because they weren't feeling good. Avoiding school is an art form for some. Just think about Ferris Bueller. For the school's part, most public schools are funded based on the number of students attending each day. School dodgers don't help funding. The daily attendance is very important. It means money for programs, for buildings, for its employees, etc., etc. Taking attendance is no joke. Tossed into this issue is a little something we in the school business affectionately refer to as excused and unexcused absences. A student is excused when they are homesick and bring a note when they return to school. The student is unexcused when the student blows off school or the student doesn't bring a note detailing the excusable reason for being absent. The failure of this system is when a parent is perfectly willing to write a note lying for their student. Can you spell role model? And I promise you, it's not a fight worth fighting. Not coincidentally, some of the most disrespectful behavior I've ever witnessed from a student to a parent correlates very strongly with these parents whose integrity appears to be so malleable. Now, for those of you not in education, too many unexcused absences causes the student problems. Problems like truancy issues, losing eligibility, losing privileges, and the list goes on and on. Now, back to being sick. My parents were decidedly old school. If there were no plans for your funeral, you'd better get ready for school and don't be late. Then off to school in the snow, uphill, both directions. Now for today's story. I flatter myself that my BS meter is pretty accurate. When a student showed up at my office wanting to go home sick, I knew two things. First, they didn't want to face the school nurse. My school nurse, like every school nurse I've worked with, treated students with kindness and a very large dose of reality. The school nurse didn't play. Secondly, they had been rehearsing the meeting all the way to my office. By the time they arrived at my door, many were weak, some could barely walk, and I even had one that was drooling. Since just feeling bad is such a difficult thing to define, it might not get you the free pass. Vomiting was always the ailment of choice for students. It was serious, non-life-threatening, impossible to prove, and easier to discuss than diarrhea. On this day, my secretary notified me over the intercom that little Johnny needed to see me. He claimed he was at death's door and needed to have his grandmother come after him. He thought he might even need to go to the emergency room. Johnny moved into my office with the speed of a slug. Everything but the slime trail. He painfully sat down. His face was red, not pale as one might expect, and his face was wet, as was the top of his shirt. A certain sense of humor is required to deal with students. It can make the day go faster and makes it a lot more enjoyable. Are you feeling okay? I ask. He is very slow in responding. No, he moans. I don't say anything for a minute, knowing he will fill the silence. Finally, Johnny says, I am sick and I need to go home. You are, I replied brightly. Yes, he says. Well, Johnny, I say, what's wrong with you? I've been throwing up in the restroom. I've never thrown up so much in my life. You've got to send me home or give me some medicine. Medicine? Hardly a day goes by at school when I don't experience something for the first time. It had just happened for that day. In all the years and all the sick and not-so-sick students I had seen, never once did anyone claiming to be puking up their shoelaces suggest I provide some kind of anti-vomit meds. I mean, we dispensed aspirins and Tylenol sometimes, but that was about it. Little Johnny looked at me, waiting for my response. I thought for a moment. I was unsure how to respond. Finally, I attempted to clarify with Johnny. You want me to give you some anti-vomit medication? Yes, he says. 
I can tell he believes he has accidentally hit on a winning idea. Well, Johnny, I slowly say, I guess you know the medicine to stop vomiting is usually a suppository. Well, yeah, Johnny immediately responds. I need a pository. The chewable kind. I don't like to swallow pills. Um, Johnny, I don't know if a suppository is chewable or not. I think they're kind of soft. Before I could finish, he blurted out, Orange flavor. I need chewable and orange flavor. Johnny, I'm pretty sure the suppository doesn't come in flavors. He gives me a quizzical look. You see, I continue, you don't eat a suppository. It's administered rectally. Outside my door, the tapping of the keyboards and the normal conversations in the reception area cease. It's like someone hit the mute button on the front of the building. Johnny looks at me without comprehension. I say it again. Johnny, it's taken rectally. You know, up your butt. Little Johnny's face contorts at the realization of my words. He leaps out of the chair and yells, That's gross! His sudden movement makes me jump. All at once, he is miraculously healed from his sickness. Before anything else could be said, he turns and bolts from the office. The laughter in the reception area was probably not helpful. The second miracle of the day, hallelujah, was he returned, completely restored and free of illness to his class. I checked on him later that day. He didn't stop or make eye contact. I said to him, well, really at him as he passed me in the hallway, Hey, Johnny. Did you slap your cheeks and pour water on your face earlier? He never broke stride. As he made the corner into his classroom, I could see the slightest hint of a grin on his face. You can't make this stuff up.